Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Beast! Peeky boo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available summer 2023, the album, Dad. Shimmy Shimmy AF. Rock on gold dust. Rhiannon rings like a bell through the night and wouldn't you love to love her? Beast! Happy Saturday. How are you guys doing today? Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a different video over here today. This is actually kind of a combination drama video. Um, not really so much, but uh, talking about some things that happen on YouTube. So we're going to talk about that. Um, but it's also kind of a combination of a Peterisms video, of, a, of something that you would find on my Peterisms channel, um, as well as a combination of my vlog. So it's kind of a combination video. I'm very uh, serene this morning. So let me tell you what happened. And I'm going to be referencing a video that I watched late last night, and I have to tell you, um, I already know that the title of this video is going to be be called, uh, Taking Accountability, and I, for, for historical reference, I so badly wanted to call it, um, Holding Myself Accountable, but <laughs> I thought Taking Accountability was a much better uh, title for this video. So anyway, um, I want to talk about this video that I watched late last night that was actually about me, that was referencing me, um, I want to talk about this in just a second, but let me tell you what happened. So, this is the vlog part of the video. So if you enjoy this, this is kind of what my vlog is like. So last night, um, I got done vlogging. I ordered some food every single day. I, I door dash Piata. I'm obsessed with Piata, which is Italian street food. And so I ate some of my dinner. I was watching a drag pageant on one of my favorite YouTube channels, which is Kalani Productions. They upload drag pageants from like, I mean, all the way back to like 1985 and stuff like that. But I was watching, um, I think it was Miss Gay America pageant 2009 last night. Um, Alyssa Edwards was actually one of the contestants in it, and I was watching that while I was eating my dinner. So if, you, if you're into drag pageants, I would highly, highly recommend checking out Kalani Productions. I will link them below. Um, I absolutely love this man. I mean, he puts up probably five to ten videos a day, and as somebody that is so obsessed with dra drag pageantry and have been for my entire coming out experience since I came out at 18 years old, um... Yeah, so I can remember my very first national pageant was Entertainer of the Year in Louisville, Kentucky, the year that Shayla Simpson won, won. and um, and I just can remember standing in the audience, like six rows back, for five hours, and just was completely just awestruck, you know, with the, the talent, and, and even years before that, was going to drag shows in Indianapolis, and, you know, I, I said in a video the other day that... <clears throat> I was raised by some, you know, shady drag queens in Indianapolis that taught me how to stand up for myself, and I was, you know, and <clears throat> I'm very grateful for that. Very, very grateful for that. And um, so anyway, um, that was what I was doing last night, and then after I got done eating, um, I was talking to my husband, who is currently out of town for his brother's bachelor party. They're having a really good fun, they're having a really good fun, they're having a really good weekend, <laughs> they're having a fun weekend, and, um, so I was talking to my husband, and then I was like, you know what, I think I'm gonna lay down for a little bit, and so... I put Boo Radley into bed, my little, my little dog Boo Radley, and he snuggled into his, um, his dad's, uh, pillow, and I laid down next to him and stuff like that, and then... I have had such a hard time sleeping lately that, um, and, and part of the reason why I'm doing the video this way is because I got this comment, or there was this comment on this video that I watched yesterday about my videos, and I thought, well, that's kind of an interesting take, so let's do something different today, so, but I'm going to talk about that comment in just a second, but anyway, um, that's why I'm kind of doing, like, a calmer storytelling kind of <laughs> video this morning, which I'm sure some of you enjoy, and other people are like, get to the topic, get to the drama, you know, um, so anyway, I was laying in bed, and and the last two nights, so I have this, like, woven waffle blanket that I bought on Amazon, I don't know, like, two years ago. And when it's colder out, I put it over our, we have, like, a Buffy, um comforter that I love. If you've ever looked at buying that brand, it's fantastic. And so, um, the last two nights, I was like, you know, like, I used to sleep, because I had a hard time sleeping lately, I was like, I, I used to sleep so well with this blanket over my comforter, and so I've been putting it over there, and it's almost kind of like a weighted blanket, and I have, like, the last two nights, I have slept fantastically. Well, my plan was, and I set my alarm to get up and watch some true crime documentaries last night, but I slept straight through the night. 
and I woke up this morning at about 6.45 a.m., which, <laughs> for those of you that know me out there know that I typically don't go to bed until about 6.45. Well, not, not that late, but I typically go to bed between like 5 and 6 from watching my TV shows, and so... I got up and I was drinking my water out here and um, my coffee <laughs> and I was talking to my neighbors. They were getting ready as I was getting ready to read my meditation books, which I have right here. And um, my neighbors were getting ready to go to the farmer's market and she was like, do you need anything? So I ran inside because she always gets a piece of cherry pie at the farmer's market every week from a brand called My, uh, my Sugar Pie. It's like this brand that she loves that, I don't know, it's like a local brand and they sell pies at the farmer's market. So I ran inside and I got some money and I took it across the street and I said, can you get me a piece of pie? And she's like, yeah, what kind of pie do you want? And I said, well, actually get me two pieces. And she's like, what do you want? I said, do they have sugar cream pie? Because like in the summer I love sugar cream pie. And she said, yeah. And, and she always gets cherry pie. Pie. And I said, well, I, I'm not a big cherry pie fan, but I said, get me a piece of sugar cream pie. And I said, and then anything else that you think looks good. And she's like, anything else? I said, yeah, anything else. So I'm real excited to find out what I get. And then I was doing, and, and I mentioned this in a lot of my videos, but I'll just show you guys. Um, I start my day, well, you know, taking Boo Radley out. And then I always drink a glass of water in the morning from my hot box pizza cup. And then I get some coffee. So I have some iced coffee right here. Let's have a little sip. And then I, I uh, do my prayers and my meditations, and as it's a person in recovery, that's just what I've always done. I mean, I don't know that that's what all people in recovery do, but that's what I've done for a very, very long time. And so I do my prayers. There's certain prayers that I say every single morning. They're not religious prayers. They're spiritual prayers. For example, help me to want what I already have is one of the prayers that I say. I have kind of a list of prayers that I that I go through um, that are meaningful to me. So that's a prayer of gratitude. That's a prayer that I learned very, very early on from a friend of mine that uh, was in my aftercare group. Helped me to want what I already have. Um, and that kind of keeps me focused on not all, constantly wanting more or different or whatever, but just being happy with what I already have. And then I go in and I, I read my meditation books. So for example, this morning... I have actually five meditation books. Um, I have The Daily Book of Positive Quotations by Linda Pacone, which is like one of my favorites. And then I have, um, these were, some of these were my mom's books. This one, this one was my mom's book that she put, this is The Soul's Companion. Connecting with the Soul Through Daily Meditations. My mom actually wrote in here, you can see it's got her writing at the top of it. Um, it says, or, oh no, actually it was to me that my mom wrote in here. To Peter, um, on my fifth sobriety birthday, I love you. Um, now onto a new millennium, I guess. Oh, that would have been, yeah. Uh, let our souls take flight. Love mom. P.S. I love you with all of my heart and soul. And so these are meditations kind of that are more a little bit like uh, Buddhist in nature. And I, I, I love them. And then meditations for living in balance. Uh, daily solutions for people who do too much. <laughs> Or do too little. Sometimes it just depends. Um, a time to be free. Daily meditations for enhancing self-esteem. And then seek sobriety, find serenity. Thoughts for every day. Which is one of my favorite uh, sobriety meditation books. So, I thought we would start with a meditation. Should we start with a meditation? I think it's July 22nd today. Yeah, it is. Okay. So let's go in here and I'm just giving you guys what I do every single day. I know there's some of you out there that are like, this is so boring. People actually watch these videos of Peter. Yes, people actually watch these videos of me reading meditations. July 22nd, taking time. No great thing is created suddenly. A pick of this. It takes time to build a relationship, a career, a house. If we try to speed the process up, we're likely to become frustrated. Worse, we may build something that is less than what we had hoped for. As I put together the pieces of my life, I recognize that I cannot and should not hurry the important things. I want whatever I build to be sturdy and long-lasting. Wow. Um, and for me, and, and if you watch my Peterisms videos, you'll know when I read meditations, I just kind of go with what my gut, my gut thought is. And in response to what I'm going to talk about today of taking accountability and... Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. For me, it's like building a foundation for my life. And that's something that I started, you know, 28 and a half years ago when I got sober was just learning to take responsibility for actions, you know, and, um, cleaning up the wreckage of my past, doing inventory of my life, um, looking at what my part was in things and, um, you know, making amends. That's the taking accountability or that's the, well, taking accountability, but it's also cleaning up the wreckage of my past part and making, you know, realizing that you're going to make mistakes as a human being and trying to learn and grow from those. And so building a strong foundation, and that's a lot of what I want to talk about today. So that was a great meditation for me today. So that's kind of how I start my day. And then I, I sit out here for a little bit and 
I just kind of listen to nature. I listen to the birds. I listen to the, the dogs barking and the people playing tennis down the street or, you know, if there's the lawnmower or whatever. And, and then I ask myself, and, and I think people find this kind of funny, but this is something that I was taught years ago. I ask myself, are you ready to start your day? <clears throat> and what I mean by that is, like, am I in a, am I in a good mental space? Am I, and I... Am I in a good space to, um, you know, get on my phone and start reading text messages and get on Twitter because, you know, we all say that Twitter is toxic, right? Um, but, you know, if you get up on the wrong side of the bed and you're not in a great space in your head and you go and you meet toxicity with toxicity, you're probably going to be toxic as well, right? And so... <clears throat> I have to ask myself if I'm in a good place. And so I say, are you ready to start your day? And what that means is, like, do you feel clear-headed? Do you feel like you have, you know, a strong foundation for your day going forward? Do you feel calm? Do you feel collected? Do you feel peaceful? Um, and I, I mean, you know, many times you guys see in my videos a very animated, very heated Peter, which it, I, I do get that way, right? Um, but the majority of the time, I'm pretty calm. I'm pretty peaceful and serene like I am right now. So typically I say, yes, I am ready to start my day. People, somebody asked me the other day, they said, what do you do if you're not ready to start your day? Which I thought was a fantastic question. And what I, what I do is that I read some more meditations or I sit and I allow myself to just be still with the world and, um, you know, listen to the birds chirp and just realize that I'm part of a, a, a bigger, you know, universe and it's not all about me. And I realize that even though I am a smaller part of this, I am a part of the universe and um, it kind of aligns my spirit a little bit. Um, you know, and I just kind of like, we talk about meditation and meditation is also translated to deep thought. And so I kind of just like think deeply about things and what I want my day to be like. And, you know, I'll put some, you know, positive affirmations out there. Like today's going to be a positive day. Today's going to be a good day. I'm going to be productive. I'm going to be happy, peaceful and serene today. So then I start my day. By starting my day is typically picking up my phone. And I do not get on my phone until then. I don't look at tweets. I don't look at text messages. I don't look at phone calls. I don't look at emails. I don't get on my phone until that moment. Because I want to be completely prepared to start my day. So that's kind of how I start my day every day. But, uh, so that was just kind of a little bit of a, a, a lesson. And, uh, <laughs> well, it's kind of a, a video of, this is kind of like a, uh, you know, like when you... Um, how like a talent show and you show like different like talents from different things you know it's what are they what do they call that not a variety show but when when you know you have like a singer from this and a dancer from that this is kind of like a little bit of a, a an example of all of my channels okay i mean we read that's my booktube channel and we're doing stuff this is my peter does stuff channel we're reviewing coffee this coffee is fantastic it's the blonde roast from starbucks and um i'm sharing with you what my day is like this is my vlog and we read a meditation that's my peterisms channel so all my channels built into one. Now I want to talk about this video that was brought to my attention last night. Okay, so um, a YouTuber by the name of Brit, Radiant Brit, which I will link her channel below. Um, and, and I want to say this before I get into this. I um, have not watched her channel in quite some time. Um, and I'm going to kind of explain the history of she and I in a second. But I have not watched her channel in quite some time. I did spend a little bit of time um, last night going through and watching some of her videos because I knew that I wanted to speak about her in this video today. Um, so I went through and I watched some of her videos. She's done quite a few videos on the Adam McIntyre Colleen Ballinger situation. Um, she did a video covering Trisha Paytas. Um, and her response to Colleen Ballinger. She uh, covers a lot of like family channels. She's done a, a extensive videos on uh, Jessica Kent, which I'm gonna actually address here in just a second because people know that I did a video with Jessica Kent years ago and I've been friendly with her and I get questions from time to time and people will say like, you never talk about Jessica Kent. What do you think about Jessica Kent? What do you think about all the drama with Jessica Kent? And I never really address it. And I actually, the last time I spoke to Jessica, I said, you know, people ask me all the time about this and I don't really, and she's like, you can say whatever you want to say. So I'm just going to share with you guys, um, what my feelings are about that and where I stand today with Jessica Kent. And I'll let you guys know that in just a second, but I kind of went through her channel because you know, uh, and she kind of references this in her video from last night or maybe one of her videos. She says something about like, I don't think it was a video about me. I think it was a different video that I watched. But she says, you know, like when you talk about other YouTubers, people immediately think that you like align yourself with all of their beliefs, which is so true, right? Like if I say, if I shout out somebody in my video and I say, oh, like I saw that this person did this or, you know, I was talking to this person or whatever, it, it immediately 
um, I think translates to the audience, which I totally understand, right? That like you co-sign, co-sign every belief system that they have and that you agree with everything that they say, which is completely not true, right? Um, but before I shouted her, her channel out, I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, that I didn't find her to be extreme. I mean, I didn't really, to be honest with you, know much about her because I, I hadn't watched her in several years, right? But I will say this, that I believe that a lot of her belief systems align closely with the things that I believe in, you know? So I was sent this video last night. Now, let me tell you the history of Brit and I. Um, Brit is a, an absolute dog and animal lover, okay? She had been sent a clip of mine that was taken out of context years ago. And she even says in this video that she believes that maybe it was one of these people. So if you haven't watched recent videos of mine, um, I am being stalked and harassed greatly, okay? And I, and I talked about it. And many of those people, including the person that I believe sent the clip to, uh, Brit, I, I think I do know who it was, they have taken down YouTube channels, Twitter accounts, they're running and hiding, okay? Which is fine. That's great. I appreciate that, right? But, like, that's just the beginning of it. Like, they're, I am pursuing this legally behind the scenes. And so, um, this clip was sent to her of where I was talking about a past dog of mine. And Britt made a video, and really coming hard for me, um, years ago. And, um... And this was a really difficult situation for me anyway. Like I, I, um, this was my recovery dog. This was my dog that my, my dad got for me because of being sober and we got it from a sober family. Um, you know, and so the whole situation was like a very difficult situation for me that I was grieving. And I, I don't, to be honest with you, talk much about it in my videos. Um, it's still, it's still hard for me to this day. So when this video came up and it was something that I had literally talked about in like a, a small clip of a vlog from years ago, Britt came out and responded to it, okay? And got her information incorrect. Now, I will tell you that she came out shortly after that when a lot of the people from my vlog, I believe, like, sent her other clips or educated her on, like, what I had said or things like that. Or she went in and found it. I don't remember. I don't remember, to be honest with you. I think that her video responding to it is still up. But she came out and took full accountability for it. I mean, completely owned it and said that she did not do the research on it. And, and, and the reason I'm making this video is not specifically just because of the journalist. Not specifically just because of uh, any one situation, whether that be Colin Ballinger, James Charles, Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, because some of these people, I think that just coming out and taking accountability is not enough. I think that some of it is just a start, right? But when I am talking about these journalists, and like yesterday I talked about this, you know, these journalists with this Colin Ballinger and James Charles articles, I said, I don't understand why they cannot come out and just take accountability and own that they made a mistake, right? And so I'm gonna show to you how, how simple it is. So she came out years ago and she made this endearing apology video, all right, and took full accountability for it, took down the video, took down the source video where she had called me out, apologized greatly for it, explained that she was taking full responsibility, explained what she had done. I mean, taking accountability is saying to somebody, this is what I did and this is how I'm going to change going forward and has shown that, right? So that's the backstory between Britt and I. Now I have to tell you, when I watched a video years ago of her, like, you know, somebody commented on the video last night because she did a video and the video is called, hold on a second, I have it pulled up right now. We need to talk about Peter Mon. And so I was sent this video and I mean, I have to tell you, at first I was kind of a little nervous. I was kind of like, oh God, what's she going to say, right? Um, but I have to tell you that years ago, because somebody said Peter's very forgiving. Like, I think that he would move on from this. You know, years ago, when I had seen her video where she took accountability and took the video down and stuff, that was enough for me. You know, I am a forgiving person, you know? Um, I believe in Oprah's definition of forgiveness, that forgiveness is letting go or of, of accepting that what happened in the past happened and now asking yourself, what are you going to do, do so that you're not held hostage to the past, you know? I'm not going to stay fixated on a video that came out years ago from somebody that took accountability and tried to make it right. I'm not, you know? And so I had deeply forgiven her and moved on from the situation and, and forgotten all about it. In all honesty, until last night, I had completely forgotten about it. And so um, I go to see this video until her, her name came up and I was like, then I remembered who she was. And I was like, oh, yeah, that was okay, is she going to say something horrible about me? Like, I'm real worried, right? Like, um, so anyway, but I went to her video, and the video is called We Need to Talk About Peter Mont, and the video, it, it's short, it's like a 12-minute video, something like that, but she's talking about 
me coming out and talking about um, my stalkers and being harassed and things like that. And um, she is, uh, it's just, a, it's a beautiful video. And she's very, very supportive and I'm very thankful for it. And I left her a comment on the video thanking her for her support and stuff and also letting her know that all is forgiven and that I've moved on from that. Because the first part of the video is dedicated to her explaining that she was even afraid to come out and make this video because anytime she would ever say anything about me in the past, people would just come out for her and be like, um, you know, like that video that you made about Peter was horrible, blah, 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 whatever, right? Okay, um, so, you know, that's kind of where I feel like sometimes as a society, we become like this incited society and I appreciate the defensiveness in, in my honor. I really appreciate that. She did to the best of her ability what she could do, you know, and I want to make this very, very clear and I want to send people to watch her videos because she's a very hardworking YouTuber that has worked on building her channel and I respect a lot of her opinions. I'm not going to say that I agree with all of her opinions because I haven't watched all of her videos, but I watched about five or six of her videos last night and I have to tell you, her stance closely aligns with my stance on things, you know? Um, and I think that we see things very similarly. But she said in her video, you know, she talked about... she. First of all, she got in the video, which she didn't have to do, and she, and she explained the entire history of what had happened between us, right? Which I just was blown away. I was like, she is not running from this. She is not hiding from this. Like, she is addressing this full on, right? Like, I was so impressed. I was like, this is how you do it, okay? This is, a, this is such a specific, perfect example of how to take accountability and continue to address it. Does she need to, <coughs> excuse me, does she need to address it in every video that she ever makes about me? Absolutely not. No, she's done it. She's done it once and she didn't need to do it twice, but I thought it was fantastic that she did. But I'm watching this video and she's talking about how she's like afraid to ever say anything about me, but in this position she wanted to be supportive of me and that, you know, she wanted to come out and make a video and, and like different times that things that had happened to me to be supportive of me and she didn't want to come out and say anything because she would get a lot of backlash, which I totally understand. I've been in those same situations, you know? It's like, um, you know, like, for example, if I make a video, um, you know, talking about Jeffree Star, and then people think that I, like, hate this person so much, but then, like, he has a dog that passes away. I typically, on those days, I, I don't make videos about those people, but, like, even if I send out a message and I say, like, hey, I feel really bad, and I have said it in some videos, because I do feel really bad, you know? Jeffree Star is still a human being that lost a pet. Like, that is unbelievably sad. If you've gone through that, I mean, it's heart-wrenching, right? And I can see Jeffree Star as a human being. I can see him as a person, even though maybe I don't necessarily 100% agree with him, right? Okay, or that I take issue with him. I can still see him as a human being. That's compassion and kindness, understanding, right? And love. Like, I, that's who I want to be in my life. And so... You know, like, I can understand wanting to be empathetic and sympathetic towards somebody, but being afraid to say something because of the backlash. I totally understand that. And so when she said that in the video, I was like, wow, okay, like, she's really being honest in this video and owning it. Then she said something that I was not aware of. She said that when she took the video down where she was accusing me of this mistreatment of my pet, that she had taken the small amount of AdSense money that she made from that video and she added some of her own funds to it and donated it to her local animal shelter. Not only that, but she showed the whole process on video when she did it. Y'all, I was blown away. Okay? I was like, okay. Well, first of all, Britt, I just want to say to you personally, because I know you're going to probably watch this video because somebody will send it to you. Everything is forgiven. Okay? Everything is forgiven you have every right to move on from this situation, okay? You you make videos if you want to talk about me. I have no issue with that. I don't take any issue with anybody that wants to get in a video and have their opinion about me for or against, okay, first of all. But you make whatever video you want to make. You don't have to kiss my ASS if you don't agree with my opinion, all right? The lengths that you have gone to to make this situation correct are above and beyond, all right? And I am so impressed. And she said in there that I was the greatest lesson that she had learned on YouTube. And I was like, that is such a huge compliment. First of all, I just want to say, I mean, I, I'm sorry that you had to go through something difficult that involved me to learn a lesson. But, like, to be part of somebody's lesson, I have so many people in my life that have taught me great lessons. Some people that I don't even really like that have taught me lessons. 
But I learned something from her video as well. I learned how to, on a deeper level, take full accountability with grace and kindness and compassion. I was so blown away by this video, you guys. And yes, it's a very simple 12 minute video. I mean, I think many of you would watch it and be like, what's Peter going on and on and on about? Y'all, she got in this video, addressed the elephant in the room as she refers to it, which it is, okay? She addressed the elephant in the room. She shared the entire story of what had happened. Again, took accountability for it. Shared how she cleared it up. Talked about giving AdSense money and her own fund. I mean, she went above and beyond, right? And the reason why I'm sharing this is, are my neighbors home? Oh, my neighbors are home with my pie. The reason why I'm sharing this is because, you know, we talk about YouTubers and pop culture figures taking accountability. And, but then, like, we don't really explain how to do it. She is a perfect example of how to take accountability. And I am so impressed with her actions. And I just want to say to Britt, thank you for being such a good representation of how to take accountability. And I learned greatly from your video too. And you have inspired me on how to take accountability on a deeper level. All right? You know, I know that people think, because I talk about taking accountability, taking accountability, learning, growing from all this, people think that I'm like this gatekeeper of taking accountability, right? So I want to read a comment that was on the video, because I loved this comment so much that this person wrote on here. Hold on a second. Let me get into my pictures. This person left this comment on the video, and they said, I don't remember any, bl oh, wait, 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 that was the other comment I want to read. Um... I am, I adore Peter and I'm become, thank you so much, I appreciate that. I adore Peter and I am becoming more and more impressed with your channel as a new viewer. I did think you did a great job here. And this is the part that I think is important. She says, accountability is not being perfect. It is taking responsibility for mistakes and doing better. Good for you for support. She goes on and says that. Okay, let's read that again. Accountability is not being perfect. It is taking responsibility for mistakes and doing better. You know, it's the saying that when you know better, you do better, you know? by Maya Angelou, right? Like, we're never going to be perfect examples of anything in life. We're never going to be perfection, right? But the reason that I am so insistent on taking accountability and growing, and I know that people get tired of hearing about it, and the reason why I say that about YouTubers that I talk about is because I want them to enjoy their lives fully because the more accountability I take in my life, the more I learn to grow as a human being, the more the more I am able to get up every single day and, and I don't have to look behind my back and wonder what's coming next and I can enjoy my life fully, you know? Which is part of the reason why I'm making this video. I want Britt to know everything is fine, okay? You went above and beyond. You were forgiven a long time ago. You showed such grace in this video. I was blown away, you know? And you are such a good example of how to effectively, fully take responsibility. And I believe as a human being that you are going to, my neighbor's coming across the street with my pie, so hold on just a second. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. You guys want to know about my neighborhood? Let me just tell you about my neighborhood. Okay, first of all, I'm holding this dollar bill because... So you want to see my pie? Okay, so here's my sugar my sugar cream pie. And the brand is called My Sugar Pie. It's like this little store here in town. Okay, isn't that so cute, that little sticker? So she got me a, sugar, a piece of sugar cream pie. And then she also got me a piece of uh, blueberry pie. And that looks so good. But anyway, I'll have those later with a little cup of coffee or... Uh, <clears throat> well, not both of them. I'll have one of them. But then I started filming again, and she starts walking across the street because she had given me my change from uh, the money that I gave her. And I said, oh, what's going on? And she goes, I think I shortchanged you. And she goes, I was supposed to give you $8 back, but I think I only gave you 7 so She came. To the I'm like, you can keep the dollar bill. It's okay. My neighborhood is so sweet. But anyway... Um, I wanted to say that I, like I, I said, that I think that Britt did such a great example, you know, or showed such a great example of taking accountability. And, um, I just wanted to highlight that. And, and it, I was, it just really meant a lot to me, you know, and I do so many videos where I am calling people out for their wrong behavior or the fact that they need to take accountability or whatever that um, I do think that it's fair for me to get in a video every once in a while and show an exemplar, exam, exemplar, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, an exemplary example of when somebody does take accountability 
in a above and beyond kind of way, right? And I was so blown away and impressed with this. And I think that it's a good example. And so many people on there were like, you and Peter have shown recently so many good examples of taking accountability. And I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate that, you know? Um, I do that because I want to enjoy my life fully. I do that not because I want to be the gatekeeper of that and be like, this person needs to take accountability and that person takes accountability and that person, that's not how I live my life, right? I share that with people because my, my taking accountability in my life, my holding myself accountable, my doing inventory, my looking at my part and my anger and my resentment at people, all of that, okay? And yes, at times YouTube has been part of that, right? That has only helped me enjoy my life more. And I'm so incredibly grateful for that, you know? So when I talk in videos and I say, if this person would just come out, if I, if I say in videos like, if Jaclyn Hill would just come out and explain and take accountability to her audience, for all of those people out there that think that I'm like this huge Jaclyn Hill hater, you know, um, and that you guys want to make all these de defenses against Jaclyn Hill and say she doesn't have to and she doesn't do that and whatever, okay, you're really stopping her from enjoying her life fully because what I truly believe is that if Jaclyn Hill were able to come out and be transparent and address her audience and take accountability for her actions and fully own them, just like the rest of these people, then they wouldn't have to look over their shoulders or wonder what's coming next or, you know, what people are going to say. And they would be like, it's already out there. I've already put it out there. It's done. What, there's nothing more to say about it, right? Just like Britt did. There's nothing more to say about it. She said everything that there needs to be said about it. So she can move on from the situation. That's exactly why it's important to take accountability, you know? And for many of these people on a bigger issue... Taking accountability is just the first part of that. You know, I always talk about awareness is the beginning to taking accountability. First, you have to be aware of what you've done. Second, you have to take accountability for it. Third, you have to make actions to change that behavior and show that you're a different person, right? And that can be in many different ways. You know, that can be from just getting in a video and owning the mistakes of your past all the way to having to deplatform yourself if possible, you know? There's many different ways that that can happen. So no, just getting in a video and saying, I'm sorry, is not it. And like I said, I think that she went above and beyond. And I was so impressed with that. And so I wanted to talk about that because, you know, I talk in a lot of videos about the importance of taking accountability, but I don't really explain why it's so important to me, you know? And this is why, you know, it is very personal to me. Because in my life, I have really, really learned that taking accountability is really the road to freedom for yourself. So for all those people out there that want to say you're constantly saying that these people need to take accountability and blah, 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 whatever and whatever, you're really defending them and you're really an obstacle for them to stand in the, you're standing in the way of their own joy, of their future is really what you're doing because you're giving them excuses for why they don't have to, you know? And if we don't change and we don't grow and we don't evolve and we don't become better people in our lives, we aren't going to enjoy our lives. Now, I don't know about you. I am not super fans of these people. I was when I first started YouTube. I'm not anymore. I film my videos, I stop the camera, I upload it, and I enjoy my day with my dog and my piece of pie. But I move on from that, right? I don't have any personal attachments to these people, positive or negative. I know y'all, some of you out there think that I'm super fans of some people and I have hate boners for them. It's just not true, whether you want to believe it or not, okay? But when you stand in the way and you're an obstacle because you say, well, you hate this person so much, then you're standing, what you're doing is you're giving them an excuse for why they don't have to take accountability and you're standing in the way of them growing as human beings. Now, I don't know about you with the people that I, with you, that who you love in your life, whether it's somebody from a distance, like a YouTuber, whether it's somebody in your personal life. But in my personal life, with my, my family and my friends, my husband, my best friend, you know, my family members, I want them to continue to grow and evolve as human beings, just like they want me to continue to grow and evolve as a human being, because then they're going to enjoy their life even more, and I'm going to enjoy my life even more, and we're going to enjoy our lives together. Don't you want that for people that you love? So... It's not about me at all. I want to read this other comment that I got on, on that was on Britt's video because I thought it was kind of cute. Um, and this is why I'm doing this video today. This, vi this video today was partly um, inspired by this comment. This person said, I don't remember any bad blood uh, uh, video with Peter. I like Peter, but 
He can be a bit much on his live reacts. I like a calm, scripted Peter. So I thought today I would give you a calm, scripted Peter, okay? I know. You know, like, a lot of people think that, like, I just, you know, walk around the house. I'm constantly like, ah! No, that's not me, okay? I mean, sometimes it is. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I like to turn on the music, you know, and dance and do runway in my bedroom and stuff like that. But no, that's not me all the time. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate that you like a calm, scripted Peter. I enjoy being a calm, scripted Peter, you know? Um, so I really liked this comment. I think if he were to watch himself back a few times, he'd see why some people with different opinions than his get frustrated with him. But he is funny, so I have to give him that. I feel bad for him thinking he's going through this for so long. No one should be stalked ever, which I really, I really, really appreciate. Um, that comment means a lot to me, you know? And, and I think people think I'm not open to people thinking differently than me and stuff like that. No, like... and. I, I thought that was a really nice comment, you know? And I do watch some of my videos back. And sometimes when I watch my video, you know, yesterday I was watching my video back. And when I was talking about, you know, <laughs> there was a part in the video that I started laughing. And, you know, when I start laughing at my own videos, and that kind of cracks me up a little bit. But that doesn't happen often. Um, but then there are other times I watch my videos. And I'm like, um, I mean, I was watching, you know, Adam McIntyre was watching my video back at 1.25 speed. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so loud. I'm so fast. You know, just like slow it down, Peter, you know? So, no, I think the same things that other people think. But anyway, to close this out, I just want to say thank you to Britt for her video. And I also wanted to make this video because as a stellar example of taking accountability, I wanted to send people to her channel and have you guys go check her out. Um, she works very, very hard on her channel. And that's not to say that you're going to always agree with her opinion. And that's not to say that I always agree with her opinion or am going to, you know? Um, like I said, I just was reintroduced to her channel last night, but I did watch, you know, quite a few of her videos. Um, but at least go check her out. She might be something that you enjoy, you know? And I'm all for shouting out people that I think are trying to improve themselves greatly, you know? Um, okay, so she makes a lot of videos about Jessica Kent, and she covers a lot of Jessica Kent drama. So for those of you, and I know there's people out there that are like, who the hell is Jessica, Je Jessica Kent? So Jessica Kent, okay, I'm gonna try to give a very brief overview of this, and I'm not gonna get into this a lot, but I, ask, I get asked quite a bit on my videos, you don't ever talk about Jessica Kent anymore. Like, what do you think about Jessica Kent? What do you think about the drama with Jessica Kent? Blah, 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 whatever. Okay. So, um, for those of you that don't know, Jessica Kent is a, I think she has like close to a million subscribers or something like that. Now, hold on a second. When, when I, uh, <laughs> This is, this is crazy to think, right? So, when I did a video with her, she had less subscribers than me, and I think I was around... Oh, God, I don't even know. I think I was around 100,000 or something. And she had less subscribers than me. And now she has, hold on a second, 1.01 uh, .01 subscribers. So she's got over a million subscribers. And um, she started out as a YouTuber very similar to Christina Randall, who I adore. Christina has been very kind to me through the years, and I really like Christina. Um, and now she's doing a lot of true crime coverage and things like that. Um... But Jessica Kent um, started off as a prison channel where she talked about being in prison and she talked about her experiences. She still does a lot of videos about that. She also talks about a lot about addiction. Now, she doesn't work a 12-step program, and a lot of people have had their things to say about that and whatever. Um, I, I have known for a very long time. She has, you know, listen, people are going to get sober how they want to get sober, okay? That's not mine. And people are, and I should say this as well, people are going to define sobriety the way that they're going to define sobriety. And that doesn't necessarily always align with me, you know? My definition of sobriety is abstinence. Um, that doesn't mean that for other people that's necessarily the case, okay? And I know you guys are, are going to be like, oh, Peter's going to walk a fine line with Jessica Kent. No, the last time I talked to her, I said to her on the phone, I said, and this is, I mean, this is probably, I don't know, you guys, four or five months ago. Um, I said to her, I said, people ask me all the time, like, what do I think about you today? And what's my opinion on you since, um, you know, people know that we did a video together because we met up and we did a video together. She was very nice to me. She's always been very nice to me. She's, uh, she's always been very kind and compassionate to me, and I appreciate it. Um, but she said, you can say whatever you want to say in a video. She was like, I don't care. So um, I will tell you that... I have been very worried about Jessica at times. Um, I think that, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to get into the, the 
the details of all of it, but as a person in recovery, I think I have been very worried for her at times. Um, there have been moments that I have reached out to her because I was worried about her and maybe some of the choices that she was making and things that she was saying. Um, I will be honest with you, there was a point that I stopped watching her um, because, in all honesty, I just couldn't anymore. Um, I couldn't support what I was seeing going on. I couldn't um, continue to endorse it, and it was too painful for me to watch. And in all honesty, that doesn't mean that I don't care about her. That doesn't mean that I don't um, have compassion for her. That means that I'm not going to engage in it. I just, I can't. It's too much for me. It's very similar to the whole Amber Amberlynn Reed thing. Um, that I think that when you're hyping a lot of stuff up, and I want to make this very, very clear, me coming out and talking about what has gone on with me recently with having stalkers and, and being harassed is bringing attention to something that I have been going on silently about for four years, or I haven't shared anything about, okay? I wasn't doing that to hype it up for views, all right? So I just want to make that very, very clear. I get very confused when I watch YouTubers that, um, you know, I had somebody say to me years ago, like, I, that they, and don't guess, because this person's not even around anymore, but they said, because it didn't work for them, they said, I don't want to uh, cover drama anymore, I want to be the drama. And so then they started attempting to be the drama, right? And this was back in the day of, you know, Trisha Paytas sitting on kitchen floors crying and things like that. And so, like, I mean, if you want to get a lot of views on YouTube, it's easy. You talk about all the drama of your life, you hype it up, whatever, okay? This was at the point where um, Jessica was um, going through some very difficult times with her ex. And that's all I'll say about that. And so she reached out to me because she was getting a lot of comments about it. And people were saying things because she was making videos about it. And so she reached out to me and said, I don't know what what to do with this, right? The suggestion that I gave to her was to, sh to shut it down, to stop talking about it, and to go back to her old, um, uh, the, her uh, old videos of what she was doing where she was talking about prisons and what happens in prisons because that was what people watched from her originally. Um, now, I do know that those videos where she talks about her ex and situations with that, which was very problematic, okay? I mean, I'm not going to excuse anything that happened in that relationship. Um, I think he has a lot of issues. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to get into the details of it. And quite frankly, I don't know enough about it to get into the details of it, except for what the, the brief things that people send me from time to time and what I've seen um, and what she told me on the phone. But at that time, I said to her, you know, she was like, I don't know what to do, blah, 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 whatever. And I said, well, why do you keep on talking about it online? And she said, well, because my audience wants to know about it. Well, when I went through her comments while I was talking to her, people were saying, why do you keep on talking about this? Why do you keep on talking? I said, Jessica, people aren't wanting you to talk about this. Like, this is very, very personal. Well, what I realized was it was garnering her a lot of views, okay? Was to talk about personal things that were very dramatic in her life was garnering her a lot of views. And I said that to her. I said, are you doing this because of the views or are you doing this because you want your audience to know? And she stood behind the fact that she felt like her audience really wanted to know what was going on with her, which might be true. I don't know. But she at the time asked me, she said, what do you think, you know, like, you know, you're a drama channel. This is what you talk about, blah, 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 blah. She was like, you know, what do you think that I should do? And I said, I think you should shut it down. I think you should make it very, very clear that going forward, I'm not going to talk about this anymore. I'm not going to talk about my ex. I'm not going to talk about this out of safety for myself and safety for my kids and safety for my, my well-being and my mental health and my future going forward. I'm not talking about this anymore. This is my last video talking about it. You know, maybe once a month I'll do an update. But other than that, I'm not talking about it anymore. And she was like, well, that was really good advice. I really appreciate that and I said go back to what you were doing go back to what you love because this is too much for you you can't handle it oh I'm so thankful I really really appreciate it blah 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 I looked about two days later she oh she said she was gonna make one last video and that was gonna be it I looked about three four days later she had uploaded like three videos talking about it I was like she didn't want to hear it she didn't want to listen to it and so I just completely distanced myself and stopped talking about it. I still am compassionate to her I'm still kind to her I still follow her on social media I I, I hope the best for her um, I don't think this is healthy for her to continue to talk about this. And I've said that to her and I'm saying it to you. So um, I have nothing to hide from. That's how I feel about it. I don't watch her videos. I don't engage in the drama. I don't know about the drama. I really, she was telling me all kinds of things about girlfriends of exes. I mean, I was like, girl, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I, I literally do not follow this at all. And so, um... I don't know anything about it. You know, I don't know anything about her life today. I wish her all the best. I, I really, really wish her all the best. I know there was a lot of time that people were talking about that they were questioning whether or not she was using or what. I listen, I don't do that. Okay? 
as a person in recovery, I don't, I don't question that, okay? I wish somebody the best. I reach out to them and say, if you need somebody to talk to, I'm here for you. So, Jessica, if you're watching this video, if you need somebody to talk to and you're out there not even, you know, speculating about it, whatever, like, listen, if you need somebody to talk to, I, I'm here for, you know, I just try to be a support system to people. So, that's what I've tried to be to her through the years. And, um, and at times, she's been a support system to me in the past as well, you know, so... Um, I wish her all the best. I really do. But I can't engage in that. I can't, you know, for me, um, it just seemed to me that she just couldn't stop talking about it for some reason. And that was, and I had to stop listening to it. And that was a choice that I made. Um, I'm not going to get in, and I'm just sharing my experience with her. I'm not going to get in a hundred videos and cover her. I'm not going to do that. And I told her that. I said, I'll, I'll talk about my experience at some point with you, but I'm not going to get in videos covering all of your drama and all the, and whatever, you know? And she's like, well, if you want to, you can. I mean, she was like, I have no problem with you making drama videos about me. I have no interest in making drama videos about her. And that is the kind of stuff that, I mean, in all honesty, like, this last week has taken a real toll on me in talking about what I've gone through the last four years behind the scenes, as well as talking about the Colleen Ballinger situation, and on and on and on, and James Charles. Like, this is, like, a lot of really dark stuff for me. It's really taken a toll on me this last week. Um, so I don't want to, like, that's not the kind of stuff that I like to cover, you know? Yesterday I did a video, and then in the video I talked about Jeffree Star's new wig. That's the kind of stuff that I like to cover. That's the kind of stuff that's enjoyable to me. I know that that's not real popular. I know people want, and I think it's important to talk about the deeper issues, but I don't want that to be my whole channel. You know, and I've made that very, very clear for quite some time that I want my channel to be a place that is funny haha. -ha. But at times, I do think it's important to talk about issues like the Colin Ballinger situation or the James Charles situation because I think there's voices that need to be heard and there's stories that need to be told. So that's why I do that. But anyway, this was a different kind of video, wasn't it? Um, so I just wanted to, I mean, it's so early, you know, it's like not even nine o'clock yet or something, but, um, I just wanted to kind of have a moment with you guys in the morning, share a little moment with you and talk about taking accountability and, and all that. So anyway, um, yeah, this was a different kind of video. Oh, a showcase. A showcase is what I was saying earlier. This was kind of a showcase of all of my channels. So if you liked this, go check out. This is probably most like my vlog or my Peterisms video. Peter Vlogs or Peterisms. It's probably most like those channels, but go check out all of my channels. And I love you guys so much, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.